Trump lost for everybody. Here he is. <laughs> and all his fans are here. So, you, first of all, Twitter, on the topic of Twitter, you were kind of a late comment, that, right? You, um, you were well, philosophically opposed to it for a while. I know I just didn't. I mean, I was philosophically opposed to doing it. I yeah. mean, in other words, lazy, I guess. Right. Are you on Twitter? Uh, well, I mean, our show is, and uh, we put up one tweet out every three or four months. <laughs> yeah, we're not really active. Yeah, well, you know, it's you're right, it's hard, it's like, it's, no, it's, it's not hard. it is dumb. I mean, everybody, <laughs> even the people who are on it know it's dumb, yeah. sort of, like, you sort of have to decide that parts of the world are dumb now, I'm just going to be involved with it, you know, I mean, it's, every, I, I, I was trying to always think of, you know, argument as to not do it, because people would say, you should do this, you should do this, and, and just saying it was dumb eventually ran, right, And uh, maybe in three months I'll, I'll run out as well. But for now, this guy's not on Twitter. Sorry, can't follow me. Follow the mayor of Red instead. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, there's all these uh, companies, right? That's what I understand. No, there's also a company called Holsterman Bread. Really? It's based out of Cincinnati. And they're Twitter. Yes, they're Twittering, and, they're, and they're twi their tweets, I guess, are similar to mine in that they're also named Holsterman. But it's, they involve, obviously, more sandwiches. Yeah. And, and biscuits and stuff like that. But most of your adults are probably involved in yeah. Biscuits. Biscuits. Yeah. First of all, let's just get some background on you and, and how you came to love sports so much, I guess. I mean, you, you grew up in North Dakota, mm -hmm. and um, there are sports in North Dakota? There are sports in North Dakota. Wow. Hunting. Hunting. Yes. <laughs> now there's sports. Yeah. Well, so what, what, I mean, who, who did you grow up as a fan of, I guess? They don't really have any professional major relief. Well, I was a really little guy. I liked the Celtics and the Cowboys. Because, you know, there's no, a lot of the, People around me, uh, of course, were Viking fans and stuff, but I was never the kind of person to really rooting for the home team. Yeah. I tend to root against the home team. Yeah. But people really. Dick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the, the guy who doesn't like people being happy about things that are good. Right. But, <laughs> I mean, it's really like, okay, I'm wearing I got this, this Kansas State t shirt. Now, some of you out there are probably wondering, I go to Kansas State. I did not. The reason I think some of you are wondering that is because wearing it today, Four people have now come up to me and tried to start conversations based on it. I just got this shirt, you know. I was at a deli and this guy was like, hey, K-State, got, we got one this weekend. And I was like, at first I didn't know what he was talking about it. I was like, oh yeah, of course they won this week. They beat Central Florida. I didn't go to Kansas State. So I was like, how do you know I just don't fucking hate Central Florida? <laughs> and every time somebody beats them, I buy the shirt. <laughs> but the school beat them, you know? That ended the conversation. <laughs> he just sort of like, I, I, think he, I think he thought I was joking, you know? Yeah. But he wasn't totally sure. So you actually say these things. You don't just think them like I do. You actually say them. <laughs> well, I thought it would be a good icebreaker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you gotta get the guy to Actually, kind of an ice bill. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of like I made a glacier in the devil. Dr. Freeze. Yeah. Kind of. You have so many things to talk about. You're a man of so many interests. TV, music is big with you, mm -hmm. not just sports, but I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting. People were really into music as you are, good good rock music, like, or like, the case, and, like, bands that are good, right? I mean, well, okay. right? I, mean, good I like a lot of right? terrible bands. And those terrible. are good ones, yeah. But usually people are really into those bands like that, they're not into sports at all. You know, that was the 90s thing. That's not how it is it's now. Not, that has changed. Uh, and I would like to think about that anything in this. Maybe it's it created, not. Not just me. Yeah. I would never say that. But I do think that I sort of have, have helped sort of forge this new industry of rock critic sports writer, uh, who is, you know, it's a, a very, you know, I did a story with Stephen Melton. That's a paper. Actually, I was reading yeah, it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were sitting at a table in Portland, and, and there's on the table was like the local tabloid, like their version of Bill's Voice or whatever. And Greg Owen was on there. And I just didn't want to talk at all. I was like, I suppose you hate sports. And I was like, actually, no, I know a lot more sports than I do about pavement. Yeah, show me, you know? And then we talked about his fantasy team. He plays fantasy hockey. He doesn't watch hockey. He's that kind of guy, you know? You obviously write a lot about sports. You do the podcast, and you're big into it. Um, and you argue that sports is essential and it's important for culture. Whereas a yes. lot of people, like, like you know, ex-girlfriends of mine, would say, oh, sports. 
but uh, what beautiful women you must have dated. <laughs> Uh, 
I thought it'd be fun to ask, this is, maybe we'll just do one because we're actually kind of running short on time here. This is one uh, hyper, This is one of your hypothetical questions. Let's leave the quote and we'll see what happens here. Um, now you haven't heard this. You know, I mean, you wrote the question, but you haven't actually given any thought, right? You don't. Uh, no, I, I actually give no, no thought to anything I write. I immediately delete the information as soon as possible. Okay, good. I, I just want to say that I sort of invented this genre of combining sports and pop culture and all that. Other authors have come along and sort of borrowed the idea. I don't. I don't, I don't know. You, know, you don't get. Michael Jackson without Harriet Tubman, you know? It's, uh, somebody's got to pave the way. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how accurate that is. I don't know how accurate that is, but anyway, let's just get to the question here. Um, so here it is. This is a hypothetical question. I'll leave it to both Chuck and Chaz. Chaz Kornman. Chuck Flosserman. Here it is. Uh, first question. Think of someone who is your friend. Not your best friend, but just a casual acquaintance. Not, not a casual acquaintance either, just a, a good friend. Now think about this person getting attacked by Mets closer Francisco Rodriguez. K-Rod will viciously beat your friend about the head and face. Now you have the chance to magically save your friend Francisco Rodriguez, but your friend's salvation will come at a price. For the rest of your life, you will have to vehemently defend the signing of Oliver Perez. Wherever you go, if you overhear someone disparaging his abilities as a pitcher or as a professional character, or if you find yourself in any conversation that touches on the New York Mets at all, you will have to voluntarily pipe up with an impassioned monologue that absolves Mets management of any blame for the six, four year, $48 million deal. You will also never be invited to a Mets game ever again, because <laughs> no one's going to want to bring you. Uh, do you stop K-Rod accepting a lifetime of ostracization from Mets? Oh, uh, I would say C. I would do uh, a line of cocaine off Doc Gooden's penis while watching The Facts of Life in 1986. Okay. <laughs> do you have a uh, answer to that? <laughs> Baseball's a dead sport. Baseball's a dead sport. You heard it from Chuck Lawson. Guys, thank you so much uh, for being here.